Hi everyone. Statutory instrument number 244 of 2020 comes into operation today. This statutory instrument makes it a criminal offence to travel by public transport without wearing a face covering, unless you can avail of one of the government mandated excuses referred to in this legislation as a reasonable excuse. So what does this regulation say? The regulation is broken into seven sections as follows. Section 1 outlines the date of commencement being today, the 13th of July 2020. Section 2 confirms that this regulation will remain in force until the 5th of October 2020. However, in this regard, it is worth noting that the legislation which legalised the lockdown initially had an operation period of only four days, and many of the other COVID statutory instruments, of which there are 30 in number up to the 10th of July 2020, have all been extended past their initial dates of operation where applicable. Section 3 is the definition section. This section defines what is meant by a face covering and includes a covering of any type which, when worn by a person, covers the person's nose and mouth, meaning that you may wear a disposable face mask as found in the chemist or a scarf or any other item which covers your nose and mouth. This section also defines what a public transport vehicle is and includes a train or public bus service. So this legislation does not apply to private buses. However, as private bus companies are privately owned entities, they are free to make their own rules as to the conditions of travel. So it is quite likely they will start to impose similar measures as the measures set out in these regulations. Section four defines who a relevant person is. This section is important because a relevant person is the person who has the authority under this regulation to do things such as to request you to wear a face covering or to refuse you entry to rail or public bus services. Under this regulation, a relevant person includes any employee of a public transport operator, such as CIE, Irish Rail, Bus Erin, Dublin Bus, etc. Section 5 is the section of this legislation that regulates for the requirement to wear face coverings when travelling by public transport. This section states that a person shall not, without reasonable excuse, we will look at the definition for reasonable excuse under the next section, travel by public transport vehicle, which, as we said earlier, means rail or public bus services, within a relevant geographical location, which under statutory instrument 120 of 2020, we know to mean the entire state of Ireland, without wearing a face covering, which as we confirmed earlier, means any type of face covering that covers the nose and mouth. Provided, however, that the requirement to wear a face covering on rail or public buses does not apply to certain persons, such as those under the age of 13, or the driver of the train or bus if they are in a self-contained unit which separates them from other members of the public or members of Angarda Siakana in the course of performing their duties. Section 6 is likely the section that people will have most interest in, as this section sets out the reasonable excuses that persons in the state of Ireland may avail of as an exemption from the requirement to wear a face covering on trains and public buses. These include a. The person cannot put on, wear or remove a face covering, one, because of any physical or mental illness, impairment or disability, or two, without severe distress. This is the exemption that I expect most people will avail of. B. The person needs to communicate with a person who has difficulties communicating in relation to speech, language or otherwise. C. The person removes the face covering to provide emergency assistance or to provide care or assistance to a vulnerable person. D. The person removes the face covering to avoid harm or injury or the risk of harm or injury. E. The person removes the face covering in order to and only for the time required to take medication. Section 7 outlines the powers of relevant persons. You might remember we defined who a relevant person was earlier. So a relevant person may a request the passenger to wear a face covering, b refuse the passenger entry to a public transport vehicle, or c request the passenger to alight from a public transport vehicle. However, 
Before a relevant person can exercise any of the powers just noted, they must give you, the passenger, the opportunity to provide your reasonable excuse for not wearing a face covering. That said, the onus is on you, the passenger, to establish to the satisfaction of the relevant person that you can avail of one of the reasonable excuses listed under Section 6 of this regulation. This Section 7 also states that if a passenger without reasonable excuse refuses to wear a face covering and refuses to remove itself from the train or public bus when asked to do so by a relevant person, any such refusal will be a criminal offence and may result in a fine of up to €2,500 or six months imprisonment. So to recap, from today, all persons except children under the age of 13 and those with a reasonable excuse may not travel by rail or public bus without wearing a face covering. And a reasonable excuse may include physical illness, impairment or disability, such as asthma, being prone to respiratory infections or weakened immune systems, or persons who feel distressed by having to wear a face covering. Given that the onus is on you, the passenger, to prove that you can avail of one of the reasonable excuses, my advice would be to seek a letter from your GP as to why you cannot wear a mask. In this regard, I suggest you bring a copy of this statutory instrument number 244 of 2020, section 6, when you visit your GP and advise him of which excuse you wish to avail of. I believe a letter from your GP will be sufficient information for a relevant person to determine whether you have a reasonable excuse that permits your exemption from wearing a face covering. In my view, and in order to protect the privacy of your medical information, I would not permit my doctor to include on any certification what physical or mental illness or impairment you have. In my view, it would be sufficient for your GP to say that, in his opinion, you are entitled to avail of the exemption under Section 6A1 or 6A2 as applicable. So how effective are face masks to prevent the spread of COVID-19? Well, there have been extensive randomised controlled trial studies and meta-analysis reviews of these studies which all show that masks and respirators do not work to prevent respiratory influenza-like illnesses or respiratory illnesses believed to be transmitted by droplets and aerosol particles. For completeness, I have included a link to these studies in the description to this video. We have also been told by the World Health Organization, the Centre for Disease Control and the Health Service Executive for many, many months that face masks should only be worn by healthy persons in limited circumstances, such as if they are caring for an infected person. Furthermore, many studies have actually been carried out on the possible negative side effects of wearing face masks, which might include headaches, increased airway resistance, carbon dioxide accumulation, hypoxia, and unknown potential harm from concentration and distribution of pathogens on and from used masks, to name but a few concerns raised by doctors and scientists to date. Given that there is the possibility for real and negative side effects to wearing a mask, is it not a valid question as to whether the legal requirement to wear a mask is an interference with the constitutionally protected right to bodily integrity? Some people will say, just wear the mask, it's only for a few days and it's only on public transport. To those people I say the following. The lockdown was initially meant to last only four days. It did not. The lockdown was initially enacted to flatten the curve, which happened in April 2020 and was then to be lifted. It was not. So to suggest that mandatory face coverings will be limited to public transport and end by October is, in my view, naive at best. There is a reason why politicians keep referring to these times as the new normal. If the measures taken through the COVID laws were intended to be temporary, a term such as the new normal would not be required. In my view, if we accept without question the measures currently being introduced, it will only serve to show the government that we can be coerced into accepting any measures which they deem appropriate. Think about these facts. The government tells us that COVID-19 has been lingering in society since November 2019. 
The advice from the WHO, the CDC and the HSE since we became aware of the existence of this virus was that healthy persons should only wear face coverings in limited circumstances. There is much evidence that concludes that face coverings do not stop the spread of viruses but may actually exacerbate other medical conditions and create new medical conditions. So why now, some nine months after the virus has been circulating in society and some three months after we have flattened the curve, would the Irish government be creating laws which further restrict our freedoms by mandating use of face coverings on public transport? You can probably tell that I have my own views on why the government are enacting these laws. However, the reason I have made this and other videos on the COVID laws is twofold. One, to inform people as to the existence and content of these laws. And two, in the hope that people would start researching and asking questions for themselves. I hope I've achieved the same. Thanks for watching.